morning, good morning. I'm trying to find y'all some Christmas music on this morning. Is everybody in the Christmas spirit? Morning, 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 everyone. Happy Christmas Eve. Morning, Demetria. Thank you so much for inviting your followers. Good morning, Jill. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Great morning, indeed. So happy and excited to see you all on this morning. Oh, hey, Juanita. <laughs> I love Christmas carols. By the way, I don't know who else does, but I really do love this time of year listening to the Christmas songs. Thanks, Jill, for joining. 916-693. Who's that joining? You you pitch a number up there? Is that a California number? 916 Sacramento? Thank you, honey. <laughs> I'm in the city. <laughs> I'm somewhat of a clown as well. <laughs> I do. I love. Yeah, girl. I love it. I have it playing in my desk. Yeah, man. We turned up on Christmas at work. Have a few hours. Well, good morning out there. This is Cheryl Ravenel, one of the founders of Detour Movement Incorporated. Yes, we're all about helping women to live the best life possible through the Word of God, because God told us that we are to live an abundant life. Hey, Jill. And that's in every area, our lives, life decisions, our relationship decisions, our finances, our businesses, our careers, whatever it is um, that's a part of our life. God called us and he expects us and he commands us through his word. Hey, Ted Knight, over and over again to live a, an abundant life. So Jill and I have been charged um, to do just that, to be um, that funnel for women out there, for young girls out there to act and serve as that mentor, as that coach, um, as that vessel that will help women to experience the best life possible, that will help women to be the best version of who God called them to be, to operate solely in their true, authentic self, um, not desiring the validation, um, the praise or the approval of other people but only being concerned about the pr approval and validation of God. So we have been charged and I can tell you that we are definitely committed to serving you. And I just wanted to share some things with you on this morning. I promise you, I will not be long. 15 minutes, you got 15 minutes. Somebody let me know when 15 minutes is up. That'd be 846. I promise you, I'm gonna cut it off. But I wanted to share something with you just really quick before this Christmas Eve. I know a lot of you may be off today going Christmas shopping and spending money and, and doing what you do during the season. But for those of you that have joined and I thank you, I appreciate you for taking this time out of your day, out of your shopping, out of your cooking or whatever it is you're doing, just to come and get this real quick. And four things I wanted to just charge you with. If anybody, any of you, well, some of you are on my social media page, but you have been, that those that are, you have been seeing me post uh, four things about the season season that we're currently in. I'm not talking about the season we're going in. I'm talking about the season now. And those four things, the four C's I wanna I want to share with you this morning is in this season, you have to be committed. You have to be connected. You have to be contagious, and you have to be coachable. And I'll say that again. You have to be committed. You have to be connected, you have to be contagious, and you have to be coachable. It is going to be impossible for you to do what God has called you to do if you do not uh, operate in those four areas in this season. And again, this season is starting now. Jesus was our prime example of all of these things that I just mentioned. He operated in all and each of these areas at some point during his ministry. 
And when you're committed to something, that means that you are willing to do whatever it takes in order for you to see what you desire to see. And it's not only you desiring to what you desire to see, but it's seeing that thing that God has promised you. So, so many of us don't receive the blessings and, and the favor of God because we're not committed. We may commit one month. We may commit two months. We may commit to one uh, thing or, or two things, but we're not solely and fully committed. What if Jesus did not commit to the cross? What if Jesus said, you know what, God, you know, he did go in the garden of Gethsemane. He did pray and say, Lord, don't you know if this if I don't have to go through this now, take this cup away from me. If I don't have to deal with this, then I don't want to deal with this. He did say that. But in the end, he still was committed to the cross. But what if Jesus, you know, at that point when he was walking to the cross or 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 when they were trying to nail him to the cross, what if he said, you know what, I, you know what, nah, I'm good. I don't want to give my life for these people. These people don't deserve my life. They don't deserve my love. They don't deserve everything that my father says that they should have. They don't deserve me. What if he said that in that moment? What if he was not committed? And that's how some of you all are out there. You're not committed. You don't stay committed to something, something, maybe that dream, your purpose, uh, whatever it is that you're supposed to be doing, whatever it is you're supposed to be connected to, you don't stay committed. So what happens with that is that you don't see the results that you desire to see because there's no commitment level. But in this season, I'm charging you that you have to stay committed, committed to purpose, committed to, committed to life changes, committed to your relationships. For those that are out there that are married, committed to your marriages, committed to your children, whatever it is, you have to stay committed to that thing. There's so many out there that have so many hidden talent, hidden gifts, hidden purpose, hidden vision. And, and some of you may have started working on your purpose and your vision and, and working in your talent, working in your ministry, but you're not committed. You're on again, off again, on again, off again. You may give a little here. You may give a little there, but it's going to take 100% commitment in order for you to, to be able to do this thing and see what you desire to see. Proverbs 16 and, thir and 3 says, commit your ways unto the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Commit your ways unto the Lord. It's only when you commit your ways to the Lord where you say, God, I'm all in. It is all or nothing. Then God can reveal what he needs to reveal to you. Another scripture, 2 Timothy 4 and 7, it talks about, I have fought the good fight. fight. I have kept the faith. It's only when you fight the good fight and you keep the faith, when you stay committed to that thing, then you'll be able to see what you desire to see. You want to know why your business is not doing well? You want to know why your ministry is not doing well? Yes, God gave you that great vision. He He came and, and gave you gave you the blueprint laid out in a dream, in a vision. Somebody even confirmed it, prophesied over it or whatever the case may be. But you want to know why it's not coming to pass? You want to know why you're not seeing what, what God says that you were going to see? It's because you have lacked commitment in that. That area you have failed to be dedicated and you have failed to be consistent in that area number two connect it connect it you have to stay connected in this season John 15 and 5 says I am the vine you are the branches if you remain in me and I in you you will bear much fruit yes welcome Latifa you will bear much fruit fruit but it's only when you stay connected it's only when you stay connected not only staying connected to jesus but staying connected to your purpose thanks to you for inviting your followers staying connected to the movement that's going forth it's only when you stay connected you will bear much fruit what is the fruit that business that ministry that purpose whatever it is that you're designing god to do you don't have to sit on it any longer. You don't have to think about it any longer. And for some of you, you don't have to pray about it any longer. Your connection in this now season is going to take you to the next place. But you have to stay connected. Even with the group, with the social media, Facebook groups that you're on, be it DMI movement or whatever movements or whatever, whatever else you're a part of, you're going to have to stay connected. Connected to the body of Christ, connected to like-minded people, connected to those people that are going to push you, that are going to encourage you, that are going to support you into your next season. You have to stay joined together. You have to. Number three, contagious. Contagious. That means that you have to be infectious. You should be changing your situations and circumstances and people around you, not vice versa. 
if you've been in this season right now and every time you're in a situation or an environment and it changes your mindset, it changes your heart, it changes the way you think, the way you talk, the way you do, that's a problem because you're supposed to change the environment and the situations around you. The situations and the environment is, are not supposed to change you. Your impact should be the very presence of everything that you stand for and everything that God stands for. What impact do you have on the people that are around you? Matter of fact, what impact do you have on the people that are closest to you? Your family, your friends, your husbands, your wife, your children, your co-workers. Are you showing up as that? Are you being contagious or are you being affected with everything that they have going on? You should be infectious, not infected. That means that you should be infecting everything around you. Number four, you have to remain coachable. Be willing to be able to be uh, taught, to be trained, not only in the word of God, but in life and in other areas of your life, your relationships, and whatever it is. If you're in business, if you're in ministry, if you're going through financial difficulties, you may need a financial advisor that, that's being taught on how to manage your finances. If it's health and fitness, you want to get your body back or your health back. If you want to be a size healthy, you need to be coached. You need to be trained in those areas. Life coaches, just how to do life. How do I do life unapologetically and on purpose? Come on. You have to be in this season where you're coachable. Where you're willing to listen and not only listen and take notes and take heed, but willing to apply that which you've learned so that you can see what you desire to see. Absolutely. Thanks, Demetria. The Apostle Paul coached Timothy. Read the book of Timothy. He was his coach. Jesus coached the disciples for over three years. He was their coach. He was their mentor. He taught them how to pray. He taught them how to be a disciple. He taught them how to have faith. He taught them how to heal the sick and to raise the dead. So you have to be coachable in this season. I said earlier that Jesus was our prime example how he operated in each of these areas. He was committed to the cross. He was committed to God's people. And most important, he was committed to God and his purpose. He knew what his purpose was when he came here on earth. Number two, he stayed connected not only to his father, but he stayed connected to the thing, to, to his purpose and connected to whereas he needed to be able to manifest himself during the time that he was here. So he had to stay connected to his disciples. He had to stay connected to his calling. He had to stay connected to his ministry. He had to stay connected connected. Number three, he was contagious. He was infectious. Jesus changed the situations and circumstances around him. Those things did not change him. He wasn't changed by his environment when he got thrown out and ostracized and, and criticized and called names and all that stuff. He didn't conform. He didn't conform to those things. The word of God tells us to be not conformed to the patterns and ideologies of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of our mind. Jesus was not conformed. He remained infectious. He infected things that, are, that were around him. And number four, even he was coachable because his father had to coach him through the process. His father had to coach him through the process. My God. Look at the story of Jesus, how he coached the disciples. Look at the story of Paul, how he coached Timothy. There's so many prophets and there's so many ministers of the gospel and just in the word of God alone that were coached and that were taught. Look at Daniel. Look at Jeremiah. These people were coached. They were mentored to do what they were called to do. They didn't just wake up one day and had a great vision, a dream, and knew that they were going to walk in purpose and started walking into it. I know a lot of us are very ambitious. A lot of us are very motivated and inspired, and that's great to have that self-ambition uh, ambition and, and motivation and all that great stuff. But at the end of the day, you are going to need somebody to walk you through the process. You are going to need somebody to be able to coach you or mentor you through the process. You are going to need tools and resources in order to do the process. You're not going to be able to do it alone. Nobody has ever done anything great alone. You, you tell me one person, not even Jesus, did what he did alone. If you name one person, name one person that you know of.
that was able to do something great, something extraordinary, something that was beyond what your normal, your natural eyes can see. Name one person for me. So in this season, my God, in this season, you're going to have to walk in these four areas. This is not for people that are going to play around with it. This is not for people that are saying, oh, I'll wait until next year. This is not for people that are saying, um, I'm committed, but you know, I have a lot of other obligations that are going on right now. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough resources. So this is not for people that are going to continue to make excuses after excuse, because I can come up with a whole bunch of excuses as to why I don't want to, why I can't, and why I won't. But at the end of the day, that's not going to do me any good because I still have an assignment to do. So either you're going to work through the excuses or you're going to allow the excuses to continue to hold you captive and in bondage to your own self. So which is it? I have two minutes, three minutes. Which is it? This is Christmas Eve. We have approximately, what, 15, 16, 17 days left in this year. In this year. Seven days, I'm like 17, 24. In this year, seven means completion. For the next seven days, what are you committed to doing? We're not waiting until next year because see what happens with that. People wait until next year to make New Year's resolutions and all that other stuff. But those things, I mean, they're just so inconsistent and, and it's, there's no commitment level there. Because if anybody wants to do anything great and wants to change their circumstances right now, they take action right now. You're not waiting until you get paid. You're not waiting until something happens. You're not waiting until something changes. You're not waiting until your load lightens up or until you have more time or more whatever. You're, you're going to take action right now. It's whatever it takes. That commitment level, that's where that commitment level is. It's whatever it takes. So for those that of you that are in Charleston, South Carolina, I'm going to extend this to you because if you're serious about doing whatever it takes. If you're serious about being committed, being connected, being contagious, and being coachable, you're going to take heed to this. We have our live event, our brunch and branding event, January 30th. I think we have 14, 13 or 14 tickets left. We sold 10 tickets in 24 hours. It's serious, y'all. You need to be in the building. You need to be in the building, brunching, brand, um, brunch and branding event. Be your own brand. How to establish your own brand, be it your personal brand, brand or professional brand. How do you show up as that every single day of your life? That's what we're going to be going over. Brunch and branding. The tickets are $15, I think 168284. Um, what does what mean? Branding or brunch? What does branding mean? Branding basically means that you are creating an, an image for yourself and how you show up to the rest of the world. So basically how how you talk, how you um, how you appear, how you even may dress, um, you know, who you are connected with uh, as far as your network of people. So that's what branding means. You're basically branding yourself. You're creating an image for yourself of how you want to show up every single day. If you are a business owner or a, in a ministry, you're creating an image for your business or your ministry, how you want it to reflect to the rest of the world. So how do you want to reflect to the rest of the world? How are you showing up? For those that are in relationships and desire to get married or not in a relationship and desire to get married and you say that you know, I'm a wifey or I'm a wifey in training or I desire to be a wife in training, are you showing up as that now? You know, what does your current life look like? What do your current choices and decisions say about you every single day? You know, even for you, those of you that are on social media and you're declaring and decreeing, I'm a child of the Lord, you know, I love God and I'm this, that and the next. You know, are you showing up as that every single day? Does your social media profile looks like that? Um, the, the post that you post, you know, your conversation that you're having and things of that nature. So that, that's what that means. You're creating an image 
an image, a personality of how you want to show up every single day. Your image, absolutely. So if you're in the area, I encourage you to go to dmibrunchandbranding.eventbrite.com. dmibrunchandbranding.eventbrite.com. We only have a few tickets left, and these tickets will be sold out by December 31st. I promise you. They will be sold out by December 31st. So go get your ticket today. Make that small, mediocre investment for your tomorrow. And for those that do not have uh, Jill's book, The Biggest Lies Women Believe About Men Themselves and Dating, you need to get on it real quick. As a matter of fact, there is a bonus, a bundle package available on that same website where you can get your brunch ticket and the book for only 28 bucks. Two life-changing actions for less than $30. Two things that are going to change the entire course of your life, your relationships, your finances, your business, your ministry for less than $30. You cannot beat that. Make that a Christmas gift to yourself. Gift that to somebody else, some other woman that are in, that is in need of that. And I also want you to know that Girls Talk Movement for anybody that buys a ticket to our brunch, they are all, they are given ten dollars off of their tickets in uh, for their conference in February. So there's so many connections here. You see how we're staying connected, we're staying committed to the purpose of the call into the kingdom. There's so many benefits of you staying connected. There's so many benefits of you staying committed. Because we are about taking 2016 by storm. No more talking. Hey, Crystal. No more thinking about it. No more deciding if we're going to do it. No more saying that we're interested. No more making promises to ourselves and to other people. We're putting all these things into action. We're not talking anymore. We are doing. We're not talking, but we are doing. Yes. And the Give Myself Away conference is on Facebook. So look for it under Girls Talk Move Movement. Hey, darling. Look for it. Look for things that are going on, not just in Charleston, South Carolina, but in the areas that you are in. I'm not sure where you all are scoping in from, but wherever you are, look for those opportunities to grow. Look for those opportunities to establish your brand, to build yourself. You know, many of you say you want to build your empire and you want to leave a legacy. You want to do all these things. It's going to require work on your part. And it's going to take you continuing to grow in self-development and in and, and the areas of your life so that you can show up as your best self for yourself first and then for other people. For those that are married, if you want to show up in your marriage, come on. You have to put in the work and you have to invest in yourself. You have to invest in purpose. You have to invest in self-development. You have to invest in change. You have to invest in greatness. These things are not just going to come because God loves us and, and, and he promised us all this stuff. Yes, those are true. You know, he, did, he does love us and he did promise us a whole bunch of stuff. But we have to do the work. We have to put in the work and we have to invest. But we have our own time and our money. It's, that's what it's going to take. I hate to break the news to you, but that's what it's going to take. But my time is up. I'm actually a few minutes over. My time is up. I do want to say this one last thing for those that are um, jury lovers, like Jill and myself. Tracy Lynn, we have partnered with Tracy Lynn. Um, she's a, fas a jury a fashion Nista, when it comes to jewelry and accessories and things of that nature. If you are interested in purchasing any of uh, the Tracy Lynn jewelry for yourself or your mother, your niece, uh, sister or daughter or special lady uh, in your life, go to DetourMovement.org. Check out the line. Uh, Detour Movement does receive 50% of those proceeds of any purchase that you make. In addition to that, if you purchase any piece of jewelry, we will give you the free ebook um, entitled The Wilderness Journey, Keys to Unlocking Your Spiritual freedom for absolutely free so check out tracy lynn get a nice piece of jewelry and get your free ebook as well and help fund the kingdom because the money goes back to detour movement half of the money goes back to detour movement for us to be able to sponsor and put on events to help you to continue to be empowered so that you can be equipped to change the world we're, we're going to be world changers and we need all of you to partner with us in order for us to be able to do that well, this is my time. I'm actually over my time. I pray that you enjoyed this morning. I pray that you were able to take away some nuggets, something um, that is going to cause you not only to think, but to take action. Not only to think. We don't want you just thinking about it. We want you to take action. 
Thank you, sis. So go get your brunch ticket, get your bundle package, get the book, get the brunch ticket, invest in yourself, invest in your future, invest in your marriage, invest in your children, invest in your community, invest in your business, invest in your ministry because we all have a ministry. We don't have to be ministers to be, have a ministry. We all have a ministry. We all are kingdom preneurs. That means we're all building, doing something to build the kingdom, even the more to expand and to grow the kingdom. Happy holidays to you as well. So we're all kingdom preneurs. I don't want to exclude anybody. Don't think that you're not equipped. Don't think that you don't have a, yes, parenting is definitely a ministry. Being a wife is a ministry. You know, being single as a ministry, you're able to tell women how to be saved and single and love the Lord and be fulfilled in that capacity. So I don't want to exclude anybody and making you feel that you don't have what it takes or you're excluded because you're not on a platform or, or whatever the case may be. The devil is a liar. We're all canonpreneurs and we're all working together to build the kingdom. So there are things that we have to do as a community of sisters in order to do that. And that's staying committed, staying connected, staying contagious, and being coachable. Well, until next time, thank you so much for joining. Please share this with someone that may need to hear this message on this morning. And again, I want you to take action. So when you get off this scope, if you don't have your ticket to brunch and branding, go get your ticket. No excuses. No excuses. Get your ticket. Talk to you all soon. You have a joyous day. Have a merry, merry Christmas. And I'll see you next time. Be blessed.